have discussed entropy, about entropy. What is entropy? The term entropy is coined from second law of thermodynamics. It is denoted by delta S. Actually, this term is coined uh, by great scientist Clausius. So, entropy is entropy is delta S. Okay? And this delta S is equal to Q reversible by T for reversible process, reversible isothermal process. Isothermal means temperature is constant. This is the definition of entropy by Clausius. Entropy is a function of probability of thermodynamic state. So from this state, 
This is a function of thermodynamic probability. So in a spontaneous process, both the entropy and thermodynamic probability increases simultaneously. And hence we can see that the state of equilibrium is the state of maximum probability. So in a spontaneous process, both entropy and thermodynamic probability increases gradually. So for spontaneous process for spontaneous process both entropy and thermodynamic probability probability increases At equilibrium, thermodynamic probability is maximum. So at equilibrium, the state of maximum probability. So this is the this is the statistical definition of entropy. Now the next thing is that how the curve looks like. So it is a probabilistic normal curve. So mathematically it is a normal curve. And normal distribution curve and it is called Boltzmann distribution. And maximum of this curve is state of equilibrium. So it is a normal distribution curve. Entropy versus energy curve is a normal distribution curve. It is called Boltzmann distribution curve. So this curve is called Boltzmann distribution curve. So the curve is like this, entropy versus energy curve is normal distribution curve and maxima is, maxima is, this part is equilibrium, thermodynamic equilibrium and it is called Boltzmann distribution curve. Distribution curve. So, from statistical definition of entropy, we can find that for spontaneous process, entropy and thermodynamic probability gradually increases and it reaches maxima when the thermodynamic process attains the equilibrium state. So, from Second law of thermodynamics, we can say that entropy is the measure of randomness or disorderness of the atoms and molecules in the system. So entropy means disorderness. Entropy is the measure of randomness or disorderness of the molecule. Entropy is Measure of of randomness, randomness or disorderness, disorderness of the molecule. So, according to Dr. A. P. G. Abdul Kalam, this is a famous quote from Dr. Kalam that a type of order comes out of disorder. So this term, this is a philosophical quotation, but this term, this disorderedness is very important. And this disorderedness we can calculate and this disorderedness concept is actually conceived from second law of thermodynamics. A type of order comes out of disorder. So it is related that this Entropy actually related to various modes of motion. The modes of motion of any molecule. So what are the different motions in a molecule? Translational motion, vibrational motion 
and rotational motion. In between two translational level, there are various rotational levels are there. In between two rotational level, there are number of vibrational levels are there. So the entropy actually accounts all different types of motion in the molecules. Translational, rotational, and vibrational mode motion in the molecule. In particularly, vibrational and rotational motion in the molecule or atom. So entropy is the measure of randomness or disorderness. So now we know that for spontaneous process, spontaneous process entropy gradually increases. Now we have to know what is this spontaneous process. This process which can be carried out without any work than all natural processes are spontaneous process. So the process that can proceed without work having to be done to bring it about that is called spontaneous process or natural tendency to occur. So spontaneous process means process that can proceed without work to be done to bring it about. So in case of spontaneous process Entropy, delta S, change in entropy gradually increases. So for spontaneous process, delta S gradually increases. So from the from second the statement of second law of thermodynamics, we can say that total entropy always increases in a spontaneous process. Total, this is from the statistical definition of entropy, we can say, we can generate a statement for second law of thermodynamics like that. Total entropy of a spontaneous process always increases. So that means the microscopic disorder, degrees of, of freedom always increases in a spontaneous process. Now, we are getting that the statement of second law of thermodynamics enter entropy always increases in a spontaneous process. Entropy, the total entropy always increases in a spontaneous process. This is a statement of second law of thermodynamics. This is another statement of second law of thermodynamics. Now, we want to discuss some other fact, natural fact. The process that is continuous in one direction are not continuous in reverse direction. Now in this figure, you can find this is a shiny name in that above, above picture. In the top picture, you can find a shiny name. But over the time, if we place that name in a wet place, in a dark place, then we found that gradually a rust is formed over the day. And this is the bottom picture. And the process is this rust formation. Rust means iron oxide. Iron oxide formation is spontaneous. And the forward process, the shiny nail becomes brown due to rust formation. But the opposite process, this rust, rust nail can't be converted into shiny automatically. So the process that is continuous in one direction are not spontaneous in reverse direction. So in this figure, due to second law of thermodynamics, the shiny nail in the top figure will over a long time rust and eventually look as the bottom figure. But if the nail is rusty, it will
will not continuously become shiny again. So this is the second law of thermodynamics. Another thing, the process that is continuous in one direction, the process is not is not spontaneous in reverse direction process which is spontaneous in one direction there is a spontaneous in reverse direction so this is another thing another thing is that another natural phenomena we can discuss here that process that is spontaneous in one temperature doesn't spontaneous in another temperature. So the process that is spontaneous at one temperature may be not spontaneous at other temperature. This process that is spontaneous in one direction, one temperature, one temperature may be non-spontaneous in
plus BB CC entropy change for a reaction. Spontaneity of reaction means the inherent tendency of the reaction to take place 
of its own in a particular direction under a given set of condition. So spontaneity of reaction means inherent tendency means water always flows towards down. That is the inherent tendency. And this is one criteria for spontaneity. Another spontaneous process. If we add some indicators, some colored substance to this water. So this color actually, this substance actually spreads to this water body. That means this small molecules of this colored substance gradually actually mixed to this water body or this. So the disorderness of this molecule gradually increases. So what are the two criteria of spontaneity? Number one, enthalpy decreases. Number two, entropy increases. Enthalpy decreases and entropy increases. Tendency to attain minimum energy, tendency to attain maximum randomness. Number one, delta H decreases. Number two, delta S increases. These are the criteria for spontaneity. Example, water automatically flows down a hill. Heat flows from hot body to cold body. So these are large number of exothermic reactions are spontaneous. So these are these are the natural tendency. These are physical. So this that means due to tendency to attain minimum energy and that it decreases. Entropy increases to gases kept in separate in separate containers are allowed to mix. They mix completely when a drop of heat or drop of colored substance is put in a beaker full of oil. It spreads uniformly. Then these are the example of entropy increase of increase in entropy. So what is the utility of entropy concept? So the magnitude of delta S helps us to predict the feasibility of a reaction. So from the first law is conservation of energy. It doesn't give, it doesn't give any conception about the direction of energy flow or feasibility of a process. Second law tells us, second law of thermodynamics tells us about the direction of heat flow and entropy helps us to predict whether the procedure is feasible, means possible or not. Whether the process is naturally occurred, is spontaneous or not. So when delta system and surrounding is positive, the reaction is feasible. When negative, the reaction is not feasible. And when it is zero, that means reaction is in equilibrium. So these are the utility of entropy concept. Delta S system plus surrounding is total entropy. Total entropy is if it is positive, it is a reaction is feasible. If it is negative, the reaction is not feasible. If it is zero, the reaction is in equilibrium. Now we will discuss about the entropy change in phase transition. What is phase transition? Phase transition means the substance actually changes, it converts from one state to another. Means solid by melting it forms liquid, liquid by evaporation forms gas. Solid by freezing forms liquid, by freezing forms solid. Solid by sublimation forms gas. Gas by condensation forms liquid. So this is the phase transition. So the change of one state, solid, liquid or gas to another is called. This is called phase transition. And latent heat is required during this phase transition. What is latent heat means some amount of heat is given or some amount of heat. It is extracted from the, from the system to attain this phase transition. We know that from the definition process, definition of entropy. Entropy is equal to
Entropy change during phase transition.
resultant of enthalpy and entropy. So G is equal to H minus T S. This is the Gibbs free energy. So this given the term is given by famous scientist J. Willard Gibbs. The free energy G is a thermodynamic state function. It is a state function. This is a state function. Means it is independent of the independent of the path followed. Depends only on the initial and final state of the system. Depends only on the initial and final state of the system. This is integrable. We can do integration. So it is G is equal to H minus T S when H is enthalpy term, T is temperature and epsilon in epsilon scale, Kelvin scale and S is entropy term. And G is extensive property. Also it is extensive property. It depends on the mass of the system. The amount of mole present in the system depends on the the number of moles number of moles of reactant and products present in the
delta H minus T delta S and free energy is a measure of energy available for doing useful work. Energy available for useful work is equal to total energy available minus non-available form of energy. Ts is the non-available form of energy and in that is the available total energy. So from these we get the useful energy. The work, the work energy which is useful for work. So G is a step function and G is extensive property. So from these we get delta G is equal to G in free energy is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So for when we write that when for pressure constant process when we write delta H is equal to E plus P del V when we write delta H is equal to P del V for constant pressure process P constant so we write delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S and delta H is equal to delta E plus P del V. So we write delta G is equal to delta H delta E plus P del V minus T del S. So this is for cost. 